Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Battle Buddy Podcast. Today, I have a very, very special guest. One tremendous, tremendous guy. Uh, and we've got a very interesting direction to go on this podcast. So you want to tune in for some of the questions because the questions are going to be fired both directions today. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Welcome to the Battle Buddy Podcast with Keith McKeever. So today I've got an old friend, Joel, the H-Train Hunt. Joel, welcome to the show. Keith, thanks for having me. You know, I was telling Keith before we got on the air that I am so happy. I'm so glad that there are so many veteran shows going out there talking about the veteran community, talking about all the nonprofits that are out there. It's not just me. You know, I'm, I'm not saying I created it or invented it or whatever, but you know what I mean. When I first started, there was very few, and now there's, like, so much more. And, you know, I I, I, I love that, you know, because now I'm at a point where I, I feel that, you know, I can kind of, like, re retire, you know, kind of thing. But one of the reasons why I wanted to have you – on the show, Keith, is because, you know, you spotlight everybody else. And I think it's important. And I think it's due time to spotlight you because you and, and you know, I'm going to mess up names because I got to, you know, you know me. Um, but you and Richard, um, you guys are killing it. You guys are doing great. Your video is great. Your sound's great. Your content's great. You're having powerful interviews. I can definitely tell that you guys are changing veteran lives. And, you know, if nobody has said that to you, I want to be one of them that says that you and Richard, you guys are doing awesome. And I'm well, so I, I proud, appreciate of, that. I'm proud of you guys. I really am. I'm not saying that I'm superior or anything. But, you know, I, hey, I'm, I think, I'm, I'm chasing you guys now. I think, uh, I think you understand, you know, like why we do it. Because I think we're all kind of cut from the same cloth. Like we, we just, we just want to serve our battle buddies. You know, we just want to serve and give back in some way, shape or form. Cause we all deal with different things. And in some ways we deal with the same things just in different ways. Uh, it just depends who you are, but you know, it's enough of the struggling. We're, we're all going to, you know, we're all going to struggle with certain things, but we have to be there for each other. Right. Like, right, exactly. I hate to say it. Civilians do care about us. They just don't know how to care about us. Right. Sometimes. Right. They get we, overwhelmed. They get overwhelmed and you really have to worry. And if it, uh, I, I've told this before on my show, I'm going to tell this again, vets. You really have to, before you like start talking, especially if you have TBI, you really need to know who you're talking to. Uh, somebody that doesn't go, get overwhelmed with information. For example, um, if somebody like cuts off their arm or something, what is a civilian going to do? They're, they're, they're going to sit there. They're going to start crying. They're going to start flipping out. You know, they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do because it's kind of like if your mom or dad died, like you have no direction right in that instance. And it can be overwhelming, you know, and when you're deployed and you have that, that orchestra around you, you know, if you don't have the right direction, that's okay because somebody over here, you're right. They always can help you, but you lose that once you get back here because I, I, I think stateside is different than oversized. And I feel that you're more together. You're more connected overseas compared to being stateside stateside is more like a nine to five job it's not really that way overseas at least in my unit it wasn't well i would agree i mean that's how it was for for me both times i was deployed but 
you know, even beyond that, like when you take off that uniform for the last time and, and you join the veteran ranks, you join the cool kid club, <laughs> uh, you are surrounded by other veterans all the time. You just don't know it. Right. Because not everybody walks around with a big old sign on their forehead said to him, right. and, says, and, I'm and, a veteran. You know what I mean? Like and nobody you just talks. don't know. And nobody talks. I, I got a guy, I have nothing against him. Um I he's a he was a battle buddy of mine. I I didn't remember him much, but I knew that he was on my Facebook and <clears throat> he got he got hurt, he got a motorcycle accident. This guy's only like 35 minutes away from me. I haven't seen him since Iraq. It's just so weird that people will travel miles and miles and miles somewhere to meet up with you. But it's really hard to get that family member to visit that lives three hours away. Unless it's some kind of like a a big, huge holiday. Am I wrong or am I right, Keith? Oh, that's, that's, that's a good point. You know, I took my family to Disney uh, last summer and I couldn't make it logistically happen. But well, actually, I've gone on a, a couple of trips over the last few years and went to went to Denver at one point in time. Uh, met up with a lady I met in a veterans group, veteran entrepreneur. Uh, never served with her. You know, she was Navy, but yeah. uh, we were able to meet up, met her and her daughter, me and my family, met for ice cream. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Went to Miami on a cruise with my wife and another lady from the same group. Uh, she had a family emergency, so we could could not meet down there, but we had plans to to meet up and, and go out for drinks. Um, but taking my family down to Disney, we were trying to make plans to meet with a, a battle buddy of mine that lives in the Atlanta area. You know, so it's like, yeah, like trying to go through an area like, oh, do I have extra time to stop and see so and so that I know is in this area? You know what I mean? Like, you know, when when going through there, like what? What I know I to do right? like <laughs> try and try and get there. I know. And you know, so many people and I'm kind of like taking the show away and I don't, I don't want to be that, do that. But um, there's a lot of people that get upset with other people for doing the same thing that the other person would have done if they were in their shoes. For example, um, I traveled to Indiana because uh, one of my best friends died and I went to the funeral and it was so funny that <clears throat> people that I knew, I'll, you know, I, I, I kind of thought to myself, I, I kind of expected them just to drop everything and just uh, pop over. And I, you know, I'm thinking, and like I said, with my TBI, Keith, I find myself thinking more and more every day. I'm thinking to myself, wow, you know, when I'm here at the house and I have like this schedule and stuff and people, they, they say, Hey man, can you blah, blah, blah. And I tell them no, like now, now it's like reverse. Now I know how it kind of feels. You know what I mean? So I don't get as upset. I guess what I'm saying is that's the that's the uh, thing that helped me control my anger. It, it, a good friend of mine, he he he, he gave me uh, an entourage or whatever you call it. You know what you know what I mean. But he gave me the phrase of. Everybody doesn't interpret the Bible the same the same way. Everybody has their own interpretation. And it just spoke to me. And I'm like, wow. You know, so instead of me getting mad, if somebody does something to me, instead of me getting mad, I, I try to think to myself, okay, <clears throat> what did I do to cause that reaction? And right when they can, when they come out at it, I, I kind of stop it. I'm like, okay, let's compromise here, you know, and, 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 and talk it out. I, I find that when <clears throat> you're dealing with a bully or anybody uh, mean, that if you just, if you confront them and come in peace, you know, hey, yeah, don't, don't go aggressive because 
I don't add gasoline to the fire, right? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But like I said, I don't mean to take the show off from you. Um, I just what what is the biggest thing? Cause you know, you, you told us what inspired you to to start this podcast. What what's the biggest thing that you've learned so far? Oh, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, there's a lot of cool people doing a lot of cool different things. That's for sure. You know, 80, gosh, you know, at the time we're recording this, I think 80 episode 87 is coming out this week. Right. That's a lot of different conversations. Yeah. It a is. lot of different topics. It is. And, and not only do you have those conversations, but I'm guessing that, You've drew a lot of knowledge. Oh, yeah. It, you know, it's on all these different topics, you know, some of them are topics that I know something about. Others I know very little about. You know, as I think back to uh, Seth Connor, one of the early ones, we talked about psychedelics. I don't know anything about psychedelics. I don't know anything about ayahuasca or, you know, magic mushrooms or, you know, whatever it was, uh, right. to me, like that was really fascinating, but I, I could get just as excited about that. We're talking about real estate and personal finance, like stuff right. I know more about, like, it's just, it's so interesting that everybody has their topic and their, and, and this thing that they're an expert at that they're coming on to share. Right. And, you know, my goal is to make that whatever that guest is an expert at, to turn that into something that educates or inspires the military member, the spouse, the the veteran or the veteran spouse, whatever educates or inspires them in way, one way, shape or form. So when they listen to it, that they're like, Hey, okay. All right. You know, okay. Joel's been through that. All right. Yep. Okay. He's, he's found ways to either overcome that or deal with it or whatever. Like if he did it, I can do it. Yeah, exactly. Or if I'm not dealing with it, I got a battle buddy dealing with it. I can yep. share this with them. This will be helpful. Or, you know, like, or, you know, like personal finance, just, just recorded one earlier today on personal finance and stuff like that. It's like, Hey, this is, this is great information to teach young troops. Like get your finances yeah. in order when you're young. So that when you, you know, get farther along in your career, you're set up for success. Right. You're going to get out of the uniform and you got the rest of your life in retirement. Hopefully, you know, at some point in time in your, in your life, like it touches everything at the rest of your life. So like, it's, it's just, it's just so fascinating. You know, it's, I, I so it's hard to point to one thing that I've learned because it's so many different topics. It's not like we're talking about just entrepreneurship or just, you know, one niche topic. It's just every has week is something different. Has it taught you empathy? Yeah, I'd say so, you know, in, in some ways. Yeah, it, it really taught me to, not just that, maybe to... Be more grateful? Uh, well, definitely. Yeah. But really to, to kind of stretch my mind, too, and think about things. I think back, you know, a few weeks ago, I uh, had, had one um, with a civilian guest. We talked about art as therapy. Well, it's not necessarily a new topic, but she brought up the art form of Ikebana, which is a Japanese, ancient Japanese art form that emperors and samurai would practice after battle to calm themselves down and it was like whoa that's really interesting you know and and how now it's mostly practiced by women but she's trying to bring that as a form of art therapy and healing for men and it's like i'm not an artistic kind of person in the form of like i'm going to make something with my hands kind of art. so it really challenged my thought process to be like, oh, okay, this is interesting. Like, and then she ch personally challenged me to create a piece, which I'm in uh, currently in the process of, of creating. I was just ready to say, when it comes to like wood or anything mechanical, dude, don't even ask me. Like, I will tear something up. I will screw wires and short circuit the doorbell. Has happened before, <laughs> but when it comes to computers. Do like the apps, the URLs, stuff like that. I'm really good at that. Why? Why did, you know, why did God punish me? You yeah. Know? See, I, she actually, she told me 
and this this kind of helped my mindset. She's like, well, everybody's creative. And I said, well, I'm not really creative. She goes, no, you may not be creative in the take a brush and paint on canvas, but you're creative at something. And uh, she's like, think about it. What could you be creative at? And I was like, I said, well, I really like spreadsheets and I love things being organized. Like I, things have to be neat and orderly in their place. Oh, she goes, OCD. So yeah, yeah, very much so. She's okay. like, well, that's kind of a form of creativity and how you organize it and the way you do it. And, and I was like, well, I never thought about it like that. You know what I mean? Like she really challenged my thought process of what right. creativity could be. And so, I mean, that's just a perfect example. I mean, a um, wonderful lady, her and I continue to chat every now and then. It was just like, wow, you know, it's just, just one of those examples of just a topic that I didn't know going into it. I was like, I don't know anything about this, but it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. I'm going to learn something. We're going to share with the rest of the world. Right. And it's just kind of like a, that's just one of those examples where it's a gift that keeps on giving. Cause I'm like, I'm, right. I'm still kind of learning. I'm, I'm creating my, my art piece and she kind of reframed my thought process when it came to the creativity. So, you know, it's, and you know, everybody's anytime something you need help with creativity, you can always call me and say, Hey, you know, help me. Cause I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at the overlays now. I'm getting really good at them. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll keep that nugget in the back of my head there. <laughs> uh, so the one last question that I have, and then you can ask your stuff, uh, is like, what is your end goal now? Like, you know what you've done. You know what you can accomplish. Like, what is your end goal? Like, what, what dream are you chasing? Are you chasing to be on FM? Are you dreaming or chasing, you know, creating some kind of maybe like a a studio or a group for veterans like your community? You know, the, the, the spotlight thing that you have sent everybody, which I love that, by the way, you know, to contribute. Like, I want to know what your end game is. I want to know what you're chasing for. And I think... I think people that follow you and they listen to you, they would like to know your end game as well. Well, this might actually surprise you, but I don't know that I have a real answer for that. Um, obviously, the goal since day one, like I said, is to educate and inspire. Right. The goal with each episode is to just get better at podcasting, to 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 put better content out there, to ask better questions to find a way to promote the episode better, to share it out there more. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, this all happened during 2020 when there was, you know, obviously we all know what happened there, but, you know, I did a lot of volunteering with the Honor Flight Network and we couldn't, we couldn't do flights to DC. Obviously it wasn't safe to take, you know, a bunch of guys in their seventies to their nineties, well, early hundreds to Washington DC during a pandemic. So, right. you know, I had this idea before that, and then when that shut down, it was like, well, you know, I needed something to fill my void. And my wife was kind of there in my ear a little bit too. And I had this kind of sitting on the shelf. So I just picked it up and started. So 2020, I did three episodes. In 2021, it was every other week. And then last year, it was uh, every single week I did an episode except for uh, December. I took the whole month of December off to kind of plan for this year and, and whatnot. Um, really the goal is to just put out about 48 episodes a year and just continue to get better every single year, interview yeah. more guests, bring more value. And quite honestly, just see where it goes. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, I don't know where the future, where the future goes. It just depends on, you know, where, where the guests and, and where the listeners take it, you know? So, where, where the real value I think in this show is, is, is more listeners listening and more listeners sharing. Exactly. That's, that's where the key is like this. I don't do this for me. I right. don't do this to bring a name for me. I do this literally for our veteran brothers and sisters, right? Because there's a, there's a chance that it could literally impact lives. This could literally keep people out of homelessness. It could literally keep needles out of arms. 
guns out of mouths, like just to be point blank here and, 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 and people above ground. Right. Like well, that's, that's, know, the, that's the goal, you know? Right. And the, so what I was getting ready to suggest is something that, that I did. And I just, I, I, I just want to share it. Okay. Sure. Go, I have to go uh, ahead. Especially with somebody that has TBI that has basically, uh, researched my whole self going through past journals, emails, AOL emails. I mean, that shit. Okay. Oh, you went way back. Didn't you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> On MySpace, there's MySpace. Oh my God. It. How'd you, how'd you recover that password? Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's, I, I don't think most people want to know how you could recover, can recover well, a MySpace password. But one thing that I've learned, okay, is everything that I've accomplished in life, I did like a timeline. Everything that happened, everything. And you know, the psychiatrist gave me this idea. I can't take credit. So I, I put like a map. I put a, like a map on the wall. And I took a I took five steps back. And I looked at my timeline and I sat there and dude, I have been through so much shit. And now that I'm, you know, getting to remember, I'm remembering stuff that I don't want that. Like just, it tears me up inside, you know, but with the sadness, one thing that I have learned is that Everything, everything that I set out to do, like, you know, um, you know, before we were going, to, before I went to, for example, before I went to Sochi, you know, my, my mom died. So when she died, I'm like, screw it. I'm, I'm not going to do it anymore. And, and my best friend pushed me to do that, you know, um, I've always kind of been the guy that when something happens or trauma happens, I kind of, I kind of close up. I kind of close up and, you know, instead of closing up, I think everybody needs to take like five steps back and, and look at like, okay, I have accomplished all this and I, I wanted to do this. This was a goal. I, I I did it. Very few people in the world will be able to do what I did. And then I, I made another. I made another goal. It might have been small for some, okay, but for me, it's pretty big. And my 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 small goal. I mean, it doesn't matter if it was famous or not. Doesn't matter if it's like a real big time radio station, but my my goal was to be on an FM channel um, because I was told ever since Colorado Media School that I would never be able to be a show host or guest host because of uh, I, I. Some people say I sound like I'm drunk. Some people don't say I don't. Yeah, it, it just depends on the, the timing of the day, of apparently. But I've been told I couldn't do stuff all my life. Um, like when I played football, I was, I was told that I wouldn't be able to do it because I was too little. You know, when I skied, I, I was told, uh, you, you're too old, you, you're, you're not going to make it. You know, um, so that's that's one thing that I wanted to kind of share with, you know, not only you, but every, you know, everybody pretty much. And um, yeah, that that's that's pretty much all my I I didn't hit the uh, I hit the time and shine thing later after I edit. But um, this is the time that. You know, I, I normally ask you like the biggest thing that I that we can do to help the Battle Body podcast. It's your time to shine. So anything that I didn't ask you, um, 
because I know you want to ask me questions and it's getting time. I know that you might have some questions that you, you would like to, you know, spotlight like your handles. What, what can we do to help you? Yeah. Um, you know what? Just sharing the message, sharing the episodes. Um, like I said, this is, this is about getting the message, getting the episodes out to veterans. Now I get it. A lot of my episodes are, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. Not everybody wants to listen to it, but in that hour, 45 minutes to an hour, there's a lot of actionable information in there. You know, I, I purposely try to write four to six questions, deep questions for each one of my guests so that we're pulling out really, really good points. So you really, really should listen to them in their entirety. If it's, if it's something that's interesting, um, if it pertains to you or share it, share it on your network, share it to somebody who might specifically need it. Um, Cause like I said, at the end of the day, it's, it's about, the veteran community and getting the message out there to them, you know, and, and saving somebody literally helping somebody avoid homelessness, substance exactly. abuse, uh, or, or, or suicide, you know, cause we, th they're all a huge problem in our community. Yeah. And like we, Life's we be a secret, like the military, you're exactly yeah. right. Cause like I said earlier, like civilians care about us. They just don't know, not all of them. I should say they don't, I don't want to blanketly say that they all don't, not all of them know how to pro take care of us. There's some that do a tremendous job of serving the veteran community. Um, I know some of them personally, tremendous people. Some, like, they just don't know how. But we have to do a better job of stepping up and taking care of ourselves. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's true. There's, there's a time and a place to poke a little fun. You know, hey, as an airman, I'll poke a little fun, you know, an Army guy or a Marine or a sailor any day. There's a time and a place for it. But then there's a time and a place to not do it and to get serious and have conversations and be like, hey, look. Get, we're okay enough playing around we're battle buddies are you taking care of what you need to take care of let's get you right. let's get you taken care of right. like you know what i mean we're, we're we're brothers and sisters like and I, I i i firmly feel that like i've trying to raise my kids to see that like at the end of the day if i see somebody on the street and they're holding a sign this is veteran like my kids are like hey dad look there's one of your brothers or sisters like they're at their young age, like they're re recognizing it. Let's like, yeah, like that's, that's how I want to see, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but it's just, we got to do, we just got to do a better job. Like that's all of us. I'm, I'm pointing a finger back at myself too. Like yeah. there's more I could do. Very... Like I just have a way of just, all I'm doing is inviting people to a conversation and I'm sharing it with the world. Right. Like there's more I can do. Like I've got some of the things I could do. Yeah. Like, I could put those put together some little things in my car for, for homeless veterans. Uh, there's maybe some things in my community I could get involved to do. There is a, a limit to what you can do. There is. Yeah. But every one of us should find something that we can do. Got to do an outlet. Yeah. Find, find some way to give back. Keyword. We have to empower. That's the only way that you're going to fix your TBI. You fix your PTSD is you empower another veteran. That's how you fix 22 or 44 or 64 or whatever damn number is. I'm so sick of hearing about it. We have yeah. to empower other veterans to do stuff. Point, point. Get out and volunteer for another organization or right. go fundraiser. If you can't do that and you can sit on your, you sit at home then pull out your cell phone and call your battle buddies and pick one a day. You know, however many you got in your phone, pick one a day and give them a call, shoot them a text. Hey, how you doing today? You doing exactly. okay? Blah, 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 whatever. Everybody can do something. Like, yeah, everybody's got five minutes out of there that they could text somebody. Just do it on a rotation. Even if you only know seven people, every Monday you text the same guy. How you doing today? This is your Monday check-in. Exactly. You know, I, I everybody could do something. Like, as long – that way you know you're doing something to try and help. Right. And that person may be – fine for the next six months but what happens when it's six months from now and they have a really really bad weekend okay and they're waking up that monday morning and they're in a really dark place and you text like clockwork at 8 a.m and they're sitting there at 7 55 and they're in the worst position they're in and that text comes through at eight o'clock and they look at their phone and they're like oh joel just texted me you know what Maybe I should call him right now. 
I, I need a battle buddy right now. You know, and I think that's what a lot of us veterans fail to realize is veterans don't, they don't reach out. What they do is, you know, because I, I was, I was there, um, you know, they kind of, they, they kind of plan their suicide out and before it happens, what they do is they'll, uh, they'll, 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 I mean, I, I did it at one time for this, but I don't do it anymore. Now it's more like, Hey, we haven't talked to each other. You know, let's talk. Let's, you know, you know, kind of like me and you, but there for a while I was texting I was texting veterans I know, hey, I was just thinking about you. I just wanted to make sure that you were good because I know that like nobody was talking to me, you know, and I didn't I, I didn't I didn't put you know th two and two together. Like, okay, you know, maybe they're working, you know. Not not everybody's day is like mine. And I never I never thought like that. Like I said, you know. I went through my uh, I went through my trauma with the incident, and I've learned a lot about myself. Yeah, when you go through some dark times, you definitely learn a lot about yourself, and it's painful. Yeah, but, it is. It really is. Yeah, but I I know exactly what you're talking about when when it comes to like like reaching out to somebody, and calling somebody. It's like yeah, you know. Are they going to call? Like, is it a bad time? You know, like, you know, last time I was in a bad spot, like I, I was not suicidal, but I, I, you know, I was really struggling with some stuff and I thought about picking up the phone and reaching out to some battle buddies just to just, just to have somebody to talk to be like, right. hey, here's how I'm feeling. Like, Hey, like just to have somebody listen, you know? Right. And I was like, man, is it too late at night? Like, what is this person doing? Like, do they really want to hear my troubles? Like, do I know this person well enough? Like, are they, do they really want to hear it? You know what I mean? Like, it, and you start second guessing it. You know what I mean? Like, right. and I'll be honest, like, dude, I ended up not calling anybody. I just sat there and cried for 45 minutes. I just sat right on my weight bench and just, just let the tears roll. Like, and it was you just like, and when I was done, I just let the fucking emotions out. And I'm like, cool. Sometimes right. it's better to do that though. Because yeah. when you freak out and you get on like trauma and stuff, you know, and you you reach out to somebody, they're like, "Oh no, I'm not gonna walk away." I'm, you know, I I, I can handle. It. Well, then you start, you know, you you start the shit on them like you was having. You overwhelm them, and then you just you get in a dark spot, you know. And it's kind of hard to climb you out until that person that put you in that dark spot reaches out and says hey look we're good yeah See, people don't think about that well that's, that's one good thing about you know having uh well great great point to have a conversation about if somebody is struggling you know this suicide hotline number is 988 press one but go get mental health counseling <laughs> go get the resources that are available to you call a battle buddy if it's not that serious or you know, that one of the great things about counseling is they can teach you some tips and tricks to deal with things when they're stressful. So you don't get to the point where, you know, where you're freaking out for 45 minutes or, or just the, just the weight of the world just fucking crashes down on you for a while. Like, you know, it just sucks. Sometimes life just happens like that. Well, just, you know, comes, comes at you from 15 different directions. <laughs> it, it just happens. That ain't so, no lie either. Yep. That ain't it, no lie. I don't care who you are, and if you have trauma in your past or not, it's going to come at you 15 different directions, and the weight's going to get uh, heavy on your shoulders. So Yeah, and if you have TBI, I don't care if you're married, I don't care if you have a girlfriend, I don't care what you have, just letting you know, if you have a veteran that has TBI, just know, if he can't find his keys, if he can't find his wallet, and he sure as hell can't find his phone, you are not going anywhere. And there's a lot of people that are probably thinking, oh, that isn't the truth. That is. Be in that situation at that time and watch how your opinion changes. It's very easy for us to say, 
oh, we would never do that. But you've never been put in that position. I, I, I said to myself a long time ago that I would never pay to like postpone with somebody, you know, get out of jail or whatever. And I did. It. So before you say, oh, I'm never going to do that. That's why that's why when like CQ in the military, I thought it was funny because I, I ain't pulling CQ, not pull that shit. Blah, blah, blah. And the next thing you know, 15 minutes before shift. Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> I thought he was getting out. No, no, no. I couldn't. I couldn't pay somebody to do my CQ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody wanted that job. Absolutely. No. Oh man. Anyway, I ask your questions, Keith. Yeah, I'm, sorry, I'm running. Yeah, no. I, I just wanted to. Uh, I, I just a couple questions for you because obviously, you know, we wanted to flip the script a little bit and have you ask some questions of me, but I couldn't pass up the opportunity to highlight what you're doing with military broadcast radio. I want to scroll that across the bottom. So I appreciate what that. is military broadcast radio? First you know, of all, and, and what is the backstory on that? It's a no stress. Yeah. And, and I, I've kind of changed it, you know, cause I'm getting some help with like the communication and stuff with the TBI, but it's, it's a no stress radio station to where if you're a veteran and you want that opportunity, you know, because let's let's face it, unless you're like somebody big or you went to college or, you know, somebody you sometimes don't get that opportunity. So I'm not saying NBR is like, you know, the, the, the biggest out there. But, you know, with Brandon joining forces and being kind of the spokesperson for NBR, we have a little bit more visibility than other internet radio stations and the only reason why he joined you know me and him kind of like partner together or not really partner um but, but you know what i mean is because i like being a worker bee helping veterans i don't want nothing to do with the business side you know so i understand that yeah I, I just, I just want to do, you know, the worker bee and, you know, I've, and that's one thing that I've accomplished that I'm excited for is I finally got to a point where uh, there's a hospital in Lakewood. It's the VA Valor. It, it's the homeless vets, the guys that are fighting the PTSD and the TBI, like right here, right now, you know, they're not on social media. You know, they are literally in that hospital. And I love it that not only do we provide like Christmas baskets at Christmas for them with like 35 different resources. So it's not just hats and gloves and all this all cool stuff. It's nonprofit logo swag that when they see that, they're like, oh, nobody's going to keep a damn business card. They're going to throw that shit away, okay? But if you buy, like, hats or a shirt or, like, a little wristwatch or something, it's it's not necessarily, you know, saying to everybody, hey, look, you know, I, you know I'm doing this. No, it's, it's letting you know, hey, look, you're a part of a team, and if you ever need help, you can Google our name. Everybody knows how to use Google. You can Google that name, and you're able to get the help that you want. You know, we provide the resources. We, we try to, you know, network and send you to the nonprofits that really work well. And when I say really work well, that means – they don't fight the veteran like they they want to help the veteran you know they don't they don't send them like a 9 12 page application here fill this out you know it's not like that you know uh it's people that really really care and that they want to you know participate in this mission and that valor it, it's starting to be like valentines and easter and all those we go over to Dunkin' Donuts and we buy, we, we get donuts and we have donuts and coffee with the veterans with Stokely. And we're, we're trying to get other NFL players there because I told, I, what I told Brandon is, 
you don't understand how much veterans and people look up to you and you don't think anything of it, but it's huge to be able to sit there and eat a donut with Peyton Manning or eat a donut with, you know, now granted these guys are just like people just like us, but them giving a little piece of their time, knowing that they could be making millions for like five minutes. That's, that's appreciation right there. What's well, I mean, it's huge for somebody's mindset. Yeah. Like, Hey, uh, I mean, we all, I think almost everybody realizes exactly like those people, uh, their time is very valuable. They've got a lot of things going on. They could be spending their time, Million different directions, but if they spent, you know, half an hour or an hour of their morning, just casually having conversation, eating some donut donuts and, and drinking some coffee with them, like just g- genuinely being there for them would right. just be like just a big morale boost, especially yeah. when you're in the in a hospital. Which let's just face it, I don't care what the heck you're in the hospital for. Obviously, not well known as a as a positive, no, it, wonderful place to be. Yeah. yeah, I mean they're all they're. I mean, yeah, we we all know what that environment's like. But I, so. I, I love it. You know, every single time I I get kind of like stressed. I'm like, okay, this is the last one. And then when we do it, you know, I see the smile on their faces. And you know, ever since we started this program, me and Brandon, like, we haven't seen the same vets in there every single time like they're changing and i really think brandon is bringing a very positive outlook for them something like i said to push for that goal you know their next goal is wow i just met brandon and you know he was telling me and you know i think i can do this now yeah but that's good that's that's awesome yeah that would be that would be awesome i know i'd love to meet him oh and and peyton manning (laughs) <laughs> Any, anytime you come to Denver, brother. Again. Right. Yeah. You know, you, as we talked before, I am a lifelong Broncos fan. <laughs> like I, I've been a Broncos fan since 96. I've been, I've been die hard through the good years and the bad. I'll just tell you, I still yeah, remember. I do tickets. All right. Yeah, I cannot I, do tickets. Everybody yeah. comes up. Hey, can you give me? No, I, I can't get you a free ticket. I, 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 I've I've seen him play a couple times. I, I when I went to Denver a couple years ago, I did get to go see the stadium. Got did a stadium tour. I was like, I don't, I told my family, I was like, I don't care what else we do in Denver. So we are right. seeing the stadium. <laughs> we right. are seeing the stadium that is happening. And then uh, I did I did go to Indianapolis because I'm in Illinois. I did go to Indianapolis for Peyton Manning's return. That's my home. Uh, obviously, the, 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 the game did not. Indiana. The game did not go well, uh, but we were there for the game. Um, <laughs> Actually, we we stayed in the same hotel as the players. I remember somebody told us the players were walking out of the back of the hotel, and so there was a oh, there's like maybe twenty people back there. The buses were back there, and I remember uh, John Fox walked out, and a couple of the offensive linemen walked out. And it's like you you know these are big guys, right? Um, what was his name? Um, Vasquez or something like that was 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 there at the time. Okay. Um, the guy was like, you know, six foot seven or something like that. He was one of the guards. Yeah. I remember was, him walking out like Louis Vasquez played for the NFL if you're short. Yeah. Right. He played for the chargers for, for many years too, before he came to the Broncos. Right. I remember this dude walking out and I'm sitting like across the alley and I'm just like, also, yeah, this dude right. is a monster. <laughs> for all those, for all those parents out there that think their kids going to make the NFL, I guarantee you that unless you're over five foot nine, you should probably start teaching them like golf and bowling and stuff. Mac, maybe bowling, you know. I was like, these, these I mean, these, man, I, I, I don't know if it was just all offensive linemen. I don't, I don't know. I just remember the, some of the players coming out and it was just like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm only five, seven, but I was just like, Oh man, I felt really small. Right. Yeah. Standing across the street. These dudes are huge just huge just giants of, of men but like anyway how i feel with stokely around <laughs> man so um anyway joel man I, I appreciate you coming on and uh it, it's been fun to kind of flip the script a little bit and, yeah. and get some questions fired back I at me that. i love that and you know if any veteran is interested and 
you know, that's basically what I do is I, 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 I kind of give you direction. I kind of help you, you know, and if you're a part of MBR, it's real easy when you're doing a show on MBR, I can totally show it to Stokely and he can give you pointers and he can give you some feedback. If, you know, if that's something that you want, I, I'm here for the veteran and I'm literally trying to do what veterans want. Uh, a veteran told me that he wanted a studio here in Denver uh, to get all the veterans together so that we have a, like a Denver media thing. And I'm working on that as well. So, Oh, if, that's cool. Yeah. Anything that I can do working for vets, that, that, that's my goal. I can understand that. That's why I said like earlier, like, you know, my goal for my show, like don't really have a goal, like not one set specific goal. It's like obviously growth. It's, right. it's growth and continue to serve not one specific, like this is my goal, but um, yeah, you know, just continue to serve and continue to do things. Uh, I think it's very similar to yours. Like, Hey, what, where can we grow this and where, what can we do? How can we continue to have a voice? So exactly. Yep. So Joel, I, once again, I appreciate it. I right, can thank you. I appreciate it. We finally got it done. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you take it easy. All right, brother. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. There you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed. Remember, you got to check out the website, battlebuddypodcast.net, for all kinds of information and various resources. And like I always say, if there's a resource that's not on there and you think it should be, please reach out and let me know. And remember, the National Suicide Hotline, if you are struggling for any reason, is 988-PRESS-1.